Hey, God bless you. Welcome to my channel. Today, I want to speak to you on the theme, you will not be destroyed. So make sure you pay attention because I'm going to be reading something from the book of Daniel. And I want to let you know that God is always with you. There's a scripture in the Bible that says those who want to live godly lives will go through persecutions, will go through sufferings, but God rescues them out of all of them. So in our course, living this Christian life, we are going to face opposition. We are going to face affliction. We are going to face struggles and we're going to face temptations and battles, storms, but God will always be with us. And just like when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples and there was a great storm that rose up, the disciples were freaking out. The disciples were scared. I know I would have been scared too. I'm not saying, oh, how could they be like that? No, I would have been in the same situation as them. I would have been scared. I would have been shocked. I mean, you could see it even today. Maybe you're not in a physical boat, but in the boat of your life, sailing the seas of life, sometimes there's storms and, and the waters get choppy and you start getting scared and we start getting worried and, and we start letting doubt creep into the boat just like water creeps into a sinking ship, right? But who was in the boat? Jesus. And the same way Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, Jesus is in the boat with you today, right now, even in the storm, even in the battle. And you might say, well, how can Jesus be with me in this storm? Why can Jesus be with me? Or how can Jesus be with me if I'm going through all these things? Well, he's there. And even though Jesus is with us, sometimes we go through storms and battles. But remember what happened. The disciples were scared. The disciples were in fear for their life. They woke Jesus up. Not only was he there, but he was asleep. Can you imagine? That's how it can feel sometimes, doesn't it? It can feel like God is asleep in our lives. It can feel like God doesn't see our situation. The best men of God in scripture have felt like that before. Jonah felt desperation. Moses felt desperation. Elijah felt desperation. There's many men in scripture that felt as if God was not looking, but God was looking. And God allows us to go through those situations, not to destroy our faith, but to build up our faith. God is there. And sometimes they might feel that he's not hearing us or seeing us, but he is there and he's allowing us to go through that situation so that we can learn how to trust him. So when the disciples ran to Jesus and they, they woke him up and they said, don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus rose up, he calmed the seas, he calmed the wind, and then he looked at his disciples and told them, O ye of little faith. They were going to a destination, they were going to reach their destination, whether in a storm or whether in a calm, they were going to reach their destination. But Jesus looked at them and said, O ye of little faith. Many times we feel that we're not going to reach our destination because of the storm. But I want to let you know, your destination is eternal life. Your destination is heaven. Your destination is to finish your Christian life. And that last day, whatever day it may be, that last day that we lay our head down and breathe our last breath and close our eyes here on time present and open them in eternity, that day, we are going to make it to that day. And we are going to hear those words, and you are going to hear those words in Jesus' mighty name, well done, good and faithful servant. Even though right now the waters might seem choppy, even though right now your life might seem rocky, even though right now you might have failures and stumbles and struggles, but the Bible says, that a righteous man falls seven times, but seven times he rises again. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous, and what is righteous? People who have faith in God. It doesn't mean perfect. It doesn't mean flawless. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Righteousness comes from the Lord, and it's credited to you when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that the righteous, they stumble. But they will not be cast headlong, meaning they will not destroy themselves because the Lord is upholding him with his righteous right arm. God is holding your hand right now. And even though you stumble, even though you trip, even though the water seems choppy, not only is God holding your hand, but he is in the boat with you. And you are going to finish the course. You are going to reach the destination. It's a promise for us in scripture. The Bible says that he who began a good work in us is able to finish it until the day of his appearing. So continue to pay attention to this. Daniel chapter 3, verse 24 through 28. The title is, you will not be put to shame. God is always with you. Daniel 3, 24 through 28. We have three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? And you have the most powerful king at this time. Who am I speaking about? 
I'm speaking about King Nebuchadnezzar. He is the king of Babylon. He's very powerful. He is very aggressive. And his temper, if he loses it, he can destroy anybody in the blink of an eye. Well, he makes this idol and he tells everybody that as soon as the music starts playing, everybody got to bow down and begin to worship this idol. Well, of course, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they know the word of God. And they know that you shall not have any graved images before the Lord your God. And they know that you shall not worship any other image or any other God besides the Lord your God. They know that. So they don't listen. They refuse to listen. They respect the king. As a matter of fact, they're employees of the king. They respect the king. They have love for the king. But they're not going to obey the king's command. Because first it is to obey God than to obey the earthly commands that offend the Lord or that disobey God. So Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they make the choice. Look, we're not going to bow down. Everybody else is bowing down, but we're not going to bow down. That's a tough situation. Everybody else is bowing down. And then the consequence was, if they don't bow down, Nebuchadnezzar said, and he, he will keep his promises, believe me, Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't bow down and worship this idol, I'm going to throw you into a fiery furnace. Who in the world wants to be burned alive in a fiery furnace? No one. So it's your natural instinct to want to kneel. It's your natural instinct. It's your survival instinct of the flesh to kneel down. The flesh does not want to die. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, no, we're not going to bow down. Finally, Nebuchadnezzar calls him because they're his employees. He says, why haven't you bowed down? Oh, sorry, my lord, your king. We're not going to bow down. Whether that be something bad in your eyes or not, okay, but we're not going to bow down. And then they say this, because we know that God is able to save us, but then look at what they say. But even if he doesn't save us, we're still not going to bow down. Where did their conviction come from? Did their conviction come from always being saved? No. Their conviction came from their respect towards God. They say he's able to save us, but even if he doesn't save us, we're still not going to bow down. In other words, we're not doing this because we're expecting something else. We're doing this because of our love for God, because of our commitment for the Lord. And I want to tell you, that when you place your love and when you place your commitment in the things of God, God is looking at that. And the Bible tells us that he rewards those who know that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. God sees that. God sees the commitment. God sees the loyalty. And God, even though you go through battles, even though you go through struggles, he will not let you be put to shame. The Bible says everything you do for the Lord will never be in vain. So what happens? Nebuchadnezzar grabs these three men. They throw him into the fire furnace. It was so hot that scripture says the soldiers that brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the furnace, they died because they got too close to the fire and the fire consumed them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire furnace. But I want to show you how the same way that Jesus was in the boat with the disciples is the same way that Jesus is in the boat with you. And not just that, but it's the same way that Jesus is in the furnace with you. I know that right now things can seem that they're getting hot. Things can seem that they're getting tough. Right now the temperature is up maybe in your life. And it can seem that you're going to perish. Well, Jesus is with you. Jesus is not on the outside looking in. No. Jesus is not on a megaphone yelling, you could do it, you could do it from a distance. No. Jesus is right there. I might be close to you right now through the TV or through the phone, whatever you're watching this on. I might be close to you. But I want to let you know that Jesus is much closer to you right now than my face on that screen. Jesus is right there with you right now in the boat, in the furnace. And he's not going to let you be put to shame. And I pray that the peace of God and the comfort of God, as I continue to share this word and continue to share this video and these scriptures, I pray that the peace of God be over your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, be over your life. So look what happens here to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they're thrown into the fiery furnace. This is immediately after that. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He went from being angry to astonished. He was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his two counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, But why do I see four men unbound? walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. In other words, he was much more giant 
So you can see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can see their shadows in the fire. You can see their forms in the fire. But then King Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth one, and he was much greater, much taller. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. Look at how his position changed. He went from telling them to worship his false idol to now he's calling them servants of the Most High God. Come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire and the satraps and the perfects and the governors of the kings. Counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not any power over the bodies of those men. Same thing. That fire has no power over you because greater is he who lives in you than the one in the world who is against you. What does that fire represent for us today when the heat is turned up, when the battles are turned up, when the struggles are turned up, when the fear is turned up, when the anxiety is turned up, when that depression is turned up, when it seems that we're being consumed? It has no authority over you. Why? Because there's a fourth man in the fire with you. And his name is Jesus Christ. He was in the boat with the disciples. He was in the flame with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's in the situation with you. Remember, he's not on the outside looking in. He's right there with you. And look what happens. The hair of their heads was not singed. Their cloaks were not harmed. And no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, and delivered his servants, and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were thrown in there with anger and they came out bringing salvation. Did you know that Nebuchadnezzar was saved? In the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was saved. How did this happen? How were they able to be a testimony? Because they trusted God and God showed up. I want to tell you the same thing. Your situations are not going to be destruction to your life. Your situations are going to be for the glory of God. They're going to give glory to the Lord. God is with you and those situations have no power over you. The same way the fire had no power over Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is the same way that those battles, those struggles, those fears have no power over you. God is in the fire with you, and your life is going to be a living testimony for the honor and the glory of God. I pray this video was a blessing to you. If it was, do me a favor. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. So if you want to be alerted every time I post a brand new video, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, press the subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you can be alerted every time I post a brand new video. And also, if you would like to show your appreciation for this video or for this channel, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's called super thanks. Super thanks are always a great blessing to my life. Whatever you feel in your heart to give is a great blessing. It's found there next to the share button, next to the subscribe button. It looks something like this. It's called super thanks. The second way that you can show your appreciation, and this is on a monthly basis, is called channel memberships. And channel memberships give you special badges, special stickers, and access to archive videos that are available for channel members. If that's something you're interested in, click the link in my description and you're going to see two levels of membership. The first one is $5 a month and if you scroll down, you're going to see the super giver level. That one's $25 a month because I know that there's people who just want to give a little bit more. So whatever option you choose is a great blessing to my life. Just click the link in my description and you can choose out of the $5 one or you can choose out the $25 one. Whichever one you choose is an amazing blessing to my life. And do me a favor, before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos that are popping up on your screen. I hope and I pray that they will continue to be a great blessing to your life. God bless you.